All right, that takes care of the breakdown on a section by section basis. Now let's hear the totals. All right, these tallies are accurate to the close of business yesterday. Mr. Bobby Ewing has improved the assets he was initially given by the sum of twenty-four million one hundred and sixty thousand dollars. Well, that's a pretty good year's work, Bobby. And Mr. J. R. Ewing. Uh, J. R. Ewing has improved the assets he was given by the sum of forty million two hundred and twenty. <laughs> well, now that's the fair margin. J. R. is clearly the winner. Yes, congratulations, J. R. Thank you, Harv. Thank you. Now, boys, what about this letter? Well, it pleases me to say that even before they knew about the letter, the boys had already agreed to split the company, no matter who won the contest. Well, that's what Bobby said, and then J.R. confirmed that yesterday. Right, J.R.? Well, yes, there's some truth in the idea that we were going to share the company. J.R.? But that was in the aftermath of what happened at Southport. As very special circumstances. Both Bobby and I were, oh, highly emotional at the time. What is it, Janet? I told you I didn't want to be interrupted. There's a gentleman out here who says it's urgent he talked to Bobby Ewing. Would you ask him to come in, please, Harv? Could that wait, Bob? No, I can't, Jim. Thornton. I got here as fast as I could. You had me a little worried. Everybody, I'd like you to meet Thornton McLeish. He's my partner in those Canadian frozen fields that I was involved with. Mr. Mr. McLeish. Howdy. Mr. McLeish? Hello. I asked Thornton to come down here because I... Well, Thornton, why don't you explain it to him? When Bobby invested with us, we were sure our fields would come in. And come in big. What we couldn't tell was when they'd come in. And that was crucial to Bobby because of this contest he had with his brother. Hello, J.R. Well, things looked pretty grim there for a while. But Bobby not only stuck it out, he was instrumental in persuading another company, Barnes Wentworth, to provide us with a special drill that would solve some problems we had. Well, I assume there's a point to all this. Oh, I'm sorry, J.R. I'll cut it short. I just want to give Bobby his check. For $26 million dollars. Twenty-six million. It's his share of the profits from the Canadian fields. The drill bit worked. The test well came in gushing, and we just sold out to the majors. That was the original deal. Well, this means that you win the contest, Bobby. The uh, hell it does. The contest is over. The winner's been declared. Uh, Harv, correct me if I'm wrong, but the contest doesn't officially close until the end of business today. That's right. So I still have time to enter this check into my books. Mr. Gerber? Congratulations, Bobby. Good work, Bobby. Good work. Well, I'll be damned. I've never been a sore loser. Congratulations on your win, Bobby. Not that it makes any difference. I mean, we have decided to be partners, right? Huh? Punk, if you don't mind, I'd like to keep Daddy's letter for myself. You bet you. Bob, you've never gone back on a deal. We are partners, right? Just the way Daddy wanted it. I could be proud of you. Yeah, J.R., it's going to be just like Daddy wanted. Good boy. <laughs> good, good. That's just fine. Uh, Harv, uh, so there's no loose threads hanging around, uh, why don't you draw up some papers and make this split legal? We'll be in tomorrow and sign them. Get rid of the old business and all of the new. <laughs> yeah, Bob, like I said, just the way Daddy wanted. You and me together. Brothers. Mm -hmm.